What's up, friends and family? Welcome to week one of our family nights. And so we've been doing a Zoom call and uh, we've been meeting with a number of different parents with children, varying ages. And uh, we want to talk to you about what it looks like to raise godly families today. So before we jump there, I'm Bobby Jean. This is Clark. We um, facilitate family Zoom night. Yep. We have five little ones. And really the blessing and the gift of family Zoom night is being connected with all these other parents. So mm-hmm. if you're not connected, email Christy Palmer and she will be the one that will get you connected to the Zoom night because we want you to be in community as we learn and as we share these things together. So Collaborate we can, and yes, go yep. and... And why why should they come? I know. Well, so you should come because our desire at Emmanuel is to honor single people, young people, grandmas, grandpas, and we want to empower and help train families. So that way we can move toward um, Christ-likeness. We can move toward extension instead of um, isolation together. We, Mm -hmm. um, We so strongly desire right now to have clear Um, constant truth to our kids that are coming from us, coming from the Bible to them, because right now there's so many messages in the world that are coming at them. And so we want to band together. We want to be the village that helps raise up these little ones um, and really train them in the way they should go and point them to Jesus. And so we want to do that together. So this first video is going to be all about how we as parents Before we can even get to parenting our little ones, we need to be parented by God. Um, Other weeks are going to include really practical things. So week two is all about family mission statement. What does that mean? And how do you hold family values? Mm -hmm. Then we talk about um, mealtime. We talk about rhythms. Uh, We're going to talk about- Technology, discipline. How do you have hard conversations with your kids as the world's coming at you real fast? and. Like Bobby said, before we talk about being godly parents, we have to ourselves be parented by God. Uh, The scripture we want to give you comes from 1 John chapter 3, and this is what it says. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, Mm -hmm. that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. And so when I look at this passage, the reason why we wanted to unpack it is because it talks about this process that we're in. Like we're not yet the people that we're going to be someday. Right now we're on a journey. We're on a pilgrimage. And the decisions that we make the food we eat, the drinks we drink, the shows we watch on TV, the music we listen to in our car with our kids Mm -hmm. is forming and shaping and conforming or transforming Mm -hmm. us into the image of God or into the image of the world. And so as we talk about being uh, parented by God, being children of God, we want to encourage you, you have to rest in that truth first and then move and live and operate from that place Mm -hmm. uh, as we go forward. Right. Because one of the things that we know that is so tightly connected is who we are becoming Mm -hmm. directly determines and directly affects who our kids are going to become and who they're already forming into. So we know, you know, zero to like these formative ages, these formative times and moments when you're with someone 24 hours a day, for the most time, you're going to rub off on each other. And so before we move forward, that's just a good spot to stop and say, where am I at with the Lord? Where mm-hmm. am I at as far as being parented by God? What does that mean to me? How how does that look practically in my life? Yeah. Um, because stop the, there. The, the, yeah. tr- the truth is we all have a rhythm of life. We have a calendar. We have a schedule. Yep. You could say we have a system in place. Totally. There's a quote. If you look at the screen, it says, mm-hmm. systems are perfectly designed to get the results they're getting. Here's a good example. Mm-hmm. Um, in my parents' hometown, Pella, Iowa, it's a town of maybe 12, 13,000 people. They just opened up the Lord's Chicken, Chick fil A restaurant. And I think they opened this up like six or eight months ago. Yeah. And I was back there recently. We drove by and I noticed that the store wasn't open, but the drive through was long and there was a, a robust, lively line. I remember asking my parents, why aren't they going inside? And they said when they open a new Chick-fil-A, they fly in managers from like Georgia or wherever the home base is, 
and they take six months to train all the employees how to mm. basically make Chick Fil A Chick Fil A. Saying, here's our system. The atmosphere. Yeah, the atmosphere. Culture. Here's how you push the beautiful <laughs> Christian music. It's in, in the background. <laughs> here's how you mop the floor. Here's how you clean it. And it's not until after they have their system down that they're going to open up the doors and allow people in because they want you to walk in and experience Chick-fil-A as the owners, the CEOs, the visionaries have it set. Because when you go to Chick-fil-A... And you yeah. go, hey, thanks for my sandwich. What do they say? My pleasure. My pleasure. That's right. No matter where you go, it's the same music, the same outfits, the same smiles. Right. Like they, they do such a good job of creating a culture there and they know who they are. They know the the company they're part of. They know the company's values. They know their mission statement. Right. So when you walk in, the system is giving you, you know, no matter whether you're in Georgia or Iowa or California, what all Chick-fil-A's produce. Mm-hmm. That's good food mm-hmm. and, and a peaceful atmosphere. So when it comes to our families again, as we think about who do we want our kids to be, we got to remember that's correlated with who we're becoming. Right. And we have to be parented by God Mm -hmm. before we want to invest and dive into our kids. Yeah. And it sounds like a really daunting, big task and something like, how do we, how do we get our home to have this atmosphere, to have a culture where there's truth, where we're joyfully surrendering and walking with, you know, how do we do all these things? How do we make sure that we're clinging and and receiving from the father when Hmm. reality is the invitation of Jesus is one that while it is very, very simple, it's not easy, but it is simple and it's to follow him. Mm -hmm. The call for the disciples was all the same. It was all about obedience. It was all about follow me um, and be, you'll be fishers of men. So as they're fishing, yeah. the call is to come follow in an ordinary thing in life. And and I love that he meets them in their, their normal context. Context, So the fishermen are fishing. Yes. Matthew, the tax collector is in his tax Tax collector's booth. booth. And it's in the the ordinary and mundane. He says, come on, come follow me. And that's what we have to do as a family. And so how we do that together and how we do that is the everyday, like we just read in 1 John, the everyday receiving from the Father and following as mom and dad, we follow. And then we grab hands with our little ones and they follow us. And just like New Testament writer Paul says that, just how I have been with you and you've seen me yeah. do that. Imitate and so me, yeah. we want to do that. That's how That's how even the first century um, rabbis, and that's how they would work out discipleship was follow me and do what I do. Mm-hmm. So we want our kids to know Father God. We want our kids to believe and trust and give them, give their whole hearts to him. And to do that, we first yeah. need to examine how are we being parented? And how are we following? And that is going to be the homework we give you. After yes. every session, we're going to give you yep. some questions to reflect on and wrestle with. And you can call it homework or call it whatever you want. But your homework after this first session is, in what ways can you intentionally be parented by God? It might simply be waking up every day going, I'm a child of God. Abba, Father, you love me. I love you back. And now from yep. that place, I have something to offer everybody else around me. Yep. So as we wrap up now, that's your one homework assignment intentionally pick one way you're going to every day be parented by God in the word, with the verse, with the reminder. You got this. All right. You got this. Okay, you guys, thanks for tuning in to Parenting Zoom Night Session 1. Yep. Uh, please, 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 if you're able, email Christy Palmer. Be a part of our, our Zoom group. We yep. only meet once a month, and then we do the practice or homework for the month, and then we meet again and then enter into the next practice. All we right. want you guys to be blessed. We want you to raise um, your children to be blessed to know the Lord. So come join us. God bless you guys. God bless you. God bless you.